Okay, welcome back. Uh, we shall continue with the fifth problem of this homework. Uh, we have solved two Laplacian equation, and those Laplacian equations were corresponding to the physical situations that, even though we have some boundary conditions in terms of the potentials, we didn't have any. Uh, formation of charge at the free space so that uh, the equivalence to zero was valid all over but now instead of the Laplacian we need to solve the Poisson equation and Poisson equation we have the following relation right for all over the space but this sort of a partial differential equation turns out to be salt ray Green's method and this method dictates us the following we need to satisfy two differential equation green function is a scalar function scalar function of two coordinates now r and m prime which must be equated to let me check yeah r prime divided by e0 and Dirichlet boundary conditions which means that G are defined as at some surface R prime is equal to be zero also must be satisfied must also be satisfied once we find this sort of a green function now we are ready to expand our solution uh, into the uh, Poisson equation solution in the way follows psi r then turns out to be v prime rho r prime g r r prime dq r prime okay so for a given form of a uh, geometry and the boundary condition once uh, someone can figure out the corresponding green function that green function is in fact corresponding to the potential due to a unit charge at that specific point but if you would like to understand what shall be the potential distribution all over the whole space we need to integrate that green function over the charge distribution that was the very fundamental idea so we sort of reformulate the whole inhomogeneous Poisson equation into two steps first step is the determination of the green function that satisfy first of all this partial differential equation and then this boundary condition and then once we obtain this g now i can use its generality so that i can integrate this green function over a given charge distribution so that i end up with the charge distribution of uh, potential distribution of psi r so what is the progress here i mean why do we bother with the uh, determination of the green function instead of direct solving the Poisson equation uh, because it is the case that while we already had a partial differential equation of this type we also need to solve the very same type of a partial differential equation again with some non-homogeneous term uh, the progress is the following uh, since this is a Dirac function over here, as long as r not equal to r prime, uh, this is in fact an homogeneous equation. 
So once we obtain the solution of the homogeneous equation for this scalar function uh, for the regions of r greater than r prime and r prime greater than r so by using the some properties of the Dirac function um, we can sort of bind these two uh, solutions on that specific point so that we can end up with our green function and uh, in this problem now we will be trying to achieve to formulate the Dirichlet green function for this sort of a geometry you see in this geometry now we have the following this is beta and here we have the grounds and the grounds okay and in these sort of problems remember we always consider of a single point charge over here at rho prime and let's say phi prime our function is a function of rho phi because it it sort of uh, encodes the information of the potential of a unit charge at the point rho prime phi prime its potential value at rho and phi okay it is our green function okay what we need to solve is the following in this case we need to uh, satisfy first this boundary condition and then by having some form of a solution we need to satisfy this partial differential equation that is the idea here we have the following for g rho phi equals to zero phi prime rho prime is equal to zero and furthermore rho phi equals to beta is equals to zero we know how to handle these sort of problems right for the phi coulombs we can claim that g is sine some uh, k phi over here so uh, in order to satisfy these two boundary conditions k must be m pi phi divided by beta this is first thing sine m pi phi divided by beta is one thing over here but due to the symmetry of a uh, green function once this sort of a term does appear you also add the with the same term for the phi prime coordinate okay because we have this sort of a relation get boundary condition so that the green function must also satisfy this form. and this is the dependence of phi and in more general terms now i need to also account for the raw dependence right for that purpose i'm just adding this m a m g m rho rho prime whatever they are we will figure out figure it out soon and then the sine dependence m pi phi divided by beta and sine m pi phi prime divided by beta very nice m is from one to infinity right okay what i have done was to up to now was to deal with this part of the uh, design of the green function now i do know that for this sort of a cylindrical geometry if i assume this sort of dependence on phi on the surfaces the uh, sorry the green function yes it's equal to zero 
But I need to now satisfy the above equation, the uh, where we have the Laplacian operator. In this case, now you see we have we also need to satisfy. prime is equal to what was that prime divided by e0 we also need to satisfy this in general in our specific case remember we can always re-express it as rho minus rho prime and delta phi minus phi prime divided by rho we have studied these sort of expansions. Remember it, please. And furthermore, also verify that one may expand this drag function as follows 2 over beta from m equal to 1 to infinity sine m pi phi divided by beta sine m pi phi prime divided by beta this is also true how can we prove this? I leave it to you, but just consider the following. We already know the orthogonal relation. Uh, so we know how to expand the given function in terms of those harmonics. So uh, here that used to be the a over 2, etc. So this whole expansion holds true. Okay. One may expand. Nice. Okay, now we are ready to put the general form of G. Where was it? Yeah, here. Into this Laplacian operator. Okay, let's do it now. But, but you see, this is an expansion over M1 to 8 and this term once expanded in this form it is also on another expansion from m1 to the infinity so uh, not to make things longer let me just use a single term of an m okay that's the idea so i am just writing it down like g single component is a function of let's say gm rho and some function of phi that is the case in fact right you see gm rho and phi rho and rho prime and phi and phi prime okay so also remember that the laplacian and cylindrical coordinates and rho coordinates uh, rho and phi coordinates is as follows okay so delta square g single is equal to single component okay is equal to 1 over rho delta delta rho rho phi and gm prime it's the very first derivative plus 1 over rho square gm and phi prime prime second derivative of this right this is the left left hand side of this equation the right hand side is this one which is now equal to let's see
the left hand side is this one and the right hand side is this one delta rho minus rho prime and this whole 2 over beta you see this I have defined as this way as the right hand side is equal to 2 over beta delta rho divided by rho and multiplied by this itself right okay this is the equation that I need to solve now let me divide it by divide the whole expression this will be a long algebra so keep your patience with you by phi which shall give us the following 1 over rho delta delta rho rho gm prime no phi and plus gm divided by rho square phi square divided by phi it is equal to now this phi also I have cancelled 2 over beta delta rho minus rho prime divided by rho okay Again, remember please, phi was sine m pi phi over beta, sine m pi phi prime over beta. It was this term, hence phi prime prime divided by phi is nothing but m pi divided by beta square. Okay, so I am now writing down the whole equation by plugging this into delta over delta rho, rho gm prime plus m pi divided by beta square, 1 over rho square and m is equal to 2 over beta delta rho minus rho prime divided by rho. Let me quickly check if I, if I have found the right result. GM over rho square. Hmm. Four pi. Then there, there needs to be some minus signs over here. Let me quickly check. First of all, on the right hand side, there needs to be minus over there, forgotten it, due to the definition of the green function. It's the minus sign, okay? And furthermore, the second derivatives gives us cosine and the sine, hence there exists a minus sign over here too. So this should also be a minus. Nice. Okay. Okay, am I in a better situation with respect to the point that I have started? Yes, because now I have completely eliminated the phi dependence. It is true. Uh, and even though I have some in inhomogeneous term on the right hand side, it is inhomogeneous as long as rho is equal to rho prime. On other cases, once if for instance, rho greater than rho prime, this whole equation turns out to be, or rho smaller than rho prime, turns out to be this one. And now that I know the solution of, I know the solution of this equation, what is it? It is in general, GM rho in general A sorry 
rho to the power of m pi over beta plus b rho to the power of minus m pi over beta. To satisfy, in most general term, in most general sense, the above homogeneous equation in the case that rho is not equal to uh, rho prime. Okay, but remember, please, overall we need to solve this equation, this inhomogeneous term. So we will be sort of first determine the solution of the homogeneous equation for rho greater than rho prime and then determining the solution for rho lower than rho prime and then these homogeneous regions now we have those and at the very point that rho equals to rho prime we need to satisfy this differential equation okay you will see it in a second nice for let's examine for rho greater than rho prime now in that case gm as rho goes to infinity must be finite or zero okay then it means that gm it means that rho goes to infinity to be zero am must be am must be zero okay which means that gm rho greater than rho prime is equal to am greater m pi over beta and furthermore for rho smaller than rho prime in this case now gm as rho goes to zero we need to have some finite number and that cannot provide it unless bm goes to zero gm rho smaller than rho prime must be equal to by the way this is pm right am rho smaller because in this case rho smaller is corresponding to the rho itself minus m pi over rho sorry 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 this is plus and this is minus yes this is true because i expect that as rho goes to infinity it is going zero and as rho goes to zero it goes zero for different regions this is these are okay as now in overall then gm rho rho prime can be wrote down as cm another function as multiplication of am and bm in this form m pi over beta multiplied by rho greater minus m pi over beta okay are we done no now even though we have found the general form of gm in terms of n rho and rho primes okay these are the definitions of rho greater and rho lower Okay, in order to calculate the GM now, the very last step that I need to apply is to satisfy this equation. Okay, so to do this, I'm for I am forgetting an easy to term over here. Okay, let's just keep it in mind. Let me check quickly. Either over here, yes, here. Delta square is easier over here. Easier over there. Okay. 
Now I need to satisfy this equation. Let me copy it because I will be taking the integration. Okay. Nice. It has forgotten something here. What was it? 1 over rho. 1 over rho square. I said that. 1 over rho. Let me go into the drawing mode again. Yeah. 1 over rho. E0 rho. Okay. Given this form, now I would like to satisfy this. And if you may remember it from your quantum mechanics course, for given this sort of a uh, matter distribution, in order to satisfy this, we slightly take the integration over a region of rho prime minus e to rho prime plus e, taking the integration over d rho, okay, and the very same over here rho prime plus e again d okay because you see that will be given us a quite an easy result over here it will be minus 2 over beta e0 rho prime the right hand side and the left hand side will be the left hand side of the equation will be since this has the very same term for both gm at rho prime plus e and rho prime minus e as limit goes to 1 of course our limit e goes to 0 and this integration will, uh, will give us 0 but this one since it's already an integration uh, derivation with respect to it is giving us the following 1 over rho rho delta gm delta rho at rho prime minus e and rho prime plus e minus 0 must be equal to minus 2 beta e0 rho prime okay the passage from here to there we need to understand the details of limit goes to zero I am assuming that you are already sort of familiar with this sort of an integration okay but the idea is the following since gm is a continuous function along rho, z, rho prime um, as the limit e goes to zero there cannot be any this, uh, contribution because the left and right limits will be given us the way the same but there exists a discontinuity due to the existence of the derivative over here and this the discontinuity is this one uh, but this is continue to give us this uh, integrating result, integration result. Okay, this shall cancel and delta gm divided by delta rho at plus e minus delta gm delta rho at rho prime minus e must be equal to minus 2 beta e0 rho. That's the idea. I know the form of the GM, right? GM is in, was in this form. Let me rewrite it over here. GM is equal to CM rho to the power of minus MP over beta and rho smaller plus MP over beta. Okay. And for this region, As rho is equal to this one, 
which means that rho is greater than this one, which means that gm is cm, rho minus mp over beta, rho, which means that delta gm over delta rho is equal to cm minus mp over beta, rho minus mp over beta minus 1, rho prime mp over beta. Okay, but I need to evaluate it at rho prime plus e as the limit goes to zero. So I'll just put rho prime here minus cm mp over beta rho prime put it into here which give us nothing but one over rho prime. That is one term. Okay. Now the second term rho prime minus e rho is now equal to rho prime minus e which means that rho is smaller than rho prime which means that gm is equal to cm rho prime minus m pi over beta rho plus m pi over beta okay and delta gm divided by delta rho in this case cm rho prime minus m pi over beta and then m pi over beta and then rho m pi over beta minus 1 and let's evaluate this at rho rho prime minus e which gives us nothing but cm rho prime again and pi over beta 1 over rho prime very well i need to sorry what's going on okay i need to satisfy this equation given that these are the results okay Three, four, and five. Plug four and five in to find CM. These are very same terms, so minus two CM and beta rho prime is equal to the right hand side of the third equation minus 2 beta e0 rho prime minus 2 beta e0 divided by rho prime sorry minus 2 beta rho prime e0 yes. let me quickly check it again Hence, CM will be what? Betas cancel, rho primes cancel, twos cancel. 1 over m pi e0. Now we have found m pi, uh, our CM. So the resulting whole green function, phi, rho prime, phi prime, is nothing but from m1 to infinity 1 over m pi e0 multiplied by this gm where is it this overall gm rho greater m pi over beta minus rho lower plus m pi over beta and the sine functions sine m pi phi divided by beta and then sine m pi beta is my green function is this result correct let's check it is 4 over m because it's the 4 pi e0 times the potential it is not in the 
standard units in Gaussian units. So 4 pi 0 multiplication shall just give me, let's see, 4 pi 0 g is exactly what they want. m from 1 to infinity, 1 over m, and pi over beta, and pi over beta, and sine m pi phi over This was the expected result. It was a very long calculation. In fact, none of the determination of the green functions are quite easy because it sort of helps us to solve the inhomogeneous um, Laplace inhomogeneous Poisson equation. But the idea is almost the same for different green function determinations too. We need to find this uh, form of a function of g because at the end it relates the charge distribution to its potential for the Dirichlet boundary conditions. What is meant by Dirichlet boundary functions? It is meaning it is meant that uh, at some surfaces we have the constant potential. Okay, so the, by assuming that sort of a boundary condition, we end up with this uh, validity of this integral equation. Okay, and now uh, to determine the uh, details of the green function, we need to know our geometry and our boundary conditions. In this case, we have this cylindrical geometry from zero to beta. We need to obtain the zero potential. So for that purpose, uh, we are assuming m pi phi over beta and m pi phi prime over beta. Okay, m pi phi over beta is coming from the uh, boundary conditions. Pay m pi phi prime over beta is due to the uh, symmetry of the green function. So this uh, form is valid for the phi dependence. But we need to study the rho dependence. I mean because we will be placing our charge on that and uh, for that purpose now we need to find out uh, we need to satisfy delta square the laplacian of g to be equal to this inhomogeneous term and this inhomogeneous term in, can be represented in this Dirac delta form okay and in order to solve again this inhomogeneous partial differential equation, the right hand side term for Dirac phi minus phi prime can be expanded in this way. Okay. And now, uh, in order to make things simpler to get rid of the summations, I am just studying the single m component of a whole of the whole green function that is given me. Just uh, for the moment, let me define gm. gm is the uh, true function over there, but phi is our, the capital phi is our now dummy function because it will eliminate itself, but it is defined in this way. Okay, so I am now expressing the whole delta square function again. And I will be eliminating phi divided by, dividing it by phi. You see that helps, and then this uh, in the division can be calculated because I know the form of the phi. That has given me minus m pi over beta square, etc. So the differential equation that I need to solve for the row dependence is this one now. How can I solve this? I know that it is an homogeneous equation for the regions where rho is not equal to rho prime. But rho greater than rho prime and rho prime greater than rho must be treated differently. And I treat them differently. And by making use of the symmetry argument, now I can uh, express gm rho rho prime in this form. Okay. So here you also notice that what is meant by rho greater and rho smaller. It depends on the region. 
uh, where you study your potential function and uh, where is your charge distribution etc but in general rho greater is de denoted to maximum of rho and rho prime and rho smaller is minimum of rho and rho prime and then to solve this i am taking the integration of the whole differential equation for an infinitesimal range starting from rho prime minus e to rho prime plus e the left hand side the right hand side of the left hand side is given me zero while this is given me this uh, differential and the right hand side remember from our very previous weeks can give us this value as at the end now i need to satisfy this equation and by taking another further step to calculate these it goes on like this and then at the end the whole expression turned out to be this one and the green function is this one okay thank you even though i have guessed that this will take quite a long time i even didn't guess that it will take more than 40 minutes so let me give another break here and i will solve the uh, remaining two problems on the fourth part of our station thank you for your listening